Welcome to the sixth video in a series of tutorials on EPA Method 334.0, Expectations for Public Water Systems in Pennsylvania. This video will cover the routine calibration verifications for the GRAB method, including the requirements for primary standard analysis as well as documentation using the DEP form. In addition to the three-point initial calibration verification, Method 334.0 also requires quarterly routine calibration checks using aqueous check standards as a follow-up to ensure that each meter is maintaining its calibration over time. These must be conducted approximately every 90 days on each meter used for compliance monitoring and should continue indefinitely. Routine quarterly calibration checks need to be completed for each analysis range used for compliance monitoring. Routine verifications only require the preparation and analysis of one primary standard. The measured concentration of each standard must be within plus or minus 15% of the reference concentration or the true value of the prepared primary standard. A job aid for routine calibration verifications, which includes the steps reviewed in this video, is available at this link, which can be found in the video description below. Use the DEP form for the GRAB method routine calibration verification to document your quarterly verifications of your instrument. I'll be referencing this form throughout this video. This and all of DEP's Method 334.0 forms can be found on eLibrary. Begin by completing Part 1, General Information. Record your PWS ID, system name, analysis method used, the current year, and then your analyzer manufacturer, model, and serial number. Use the table in Part 2, Routine Calibration Verification, to record your quarterly results. Since the primary verification standard must be analyzed once per quarter, there are spaces on the form for each quarter of the year. Each quarter record the date on which you conduct the verification. You'll start by analyzing a method blank each quarter to determine if there is any interference caused by DPD reagent. Record your method blank result here. Let's review the procedure for the method blank. The procedure for determining a method blank involves following the procedure for the chosen method with the exception of the sample matrix. In other words, rather than using water that may or may not contain chlorine, use reagent grade water that does not contain chlorine. Remember to zero before adding DPD reagent. Even though you are using blank water, it must be treated just like a sample. Then add reagent, mix according to the published procedure, and read the result. Because we know there is no chlorine present in the reagent water, any measured concentration that is detected will be attributable to the presence of DPD. This value will be subtracted from our measured concentrations in order to produce a corrected concentration that is a more accurate assessment of the concentration of chlorine. The interference caused by the DPD can vary from lot to lot. It is recommended that each new lot of reagent be analyzed for a method blank to determine the impact on measured chlorine concentration. The method blank concentration must be less than or equal to one-third of the concentration of the lowest standard used to initially verify the calibration curve. So if the lowest concentration standard is 0.20 mg per liter, the method blank must be less than 0.067 mg per liter. Let's go back to the form. Next, let's look at the column for measured concentration. This is the result you determine for the check standard analysis. The next column is for the reference standard concentration, which is the true value of the standard which is prepared just prior to the routine verification. The steps to calculate and prepare your diluted standard were covered in the video on primary standards. Corrected concentration is the measured concentration minus the method blank. Since the method blank measures interference from the reagent, this correction removes that interference from the measurements. Percent difference is determined using the calculation shown. Then indicate if it passed or not. Let's take a closer look at the percent difference calculation. 
B minus A divided by A times 100%, where A is the reference concentration or true concentration, and B is the corrected concentration. This is the same percent difference calculation that you will find on the IDC and initial verification forms. If you calculate a negative percent difference, be sure to record the minus sign. A negative percent difference indicates a result that is less than the true concentration, while a positive percent difference is greater than the true concentration. This is valuable information to track as your colorimeter ages, and you can try to identify trends that may indicate that the calibration curve is shifting. If the percent difference is not within plus or minus 15%, the analyst should evaluate his or her analytical techniques and procedures to determine whether a source of error can be determined and addressed and the routine calibration procedure repeated. If the analyst is not able to successfully complete the quarterly verification, the instrument may need to be evaluated or recalibrated by the manufacturer. Finally, record analyst initials. You should also record the information for the aqueous calibration standard. There is space on the form to record the manufacturer, expiration date, and lot number of your primary standard. Notice that there are four sets of lines, one for each quarter, so you should record this information each quarter. Here are a few tips to help you eliminate sources of error. Make sure all reagents are from the same lot so they are all designed for the same sample size and have the same degree of interference. Use a two-step rinsing process between analyses. Start by thoroughly rinsing your sample cell with distilled water to remove all traces of residual reagent. Then rinse it again with a small volume of prepared standard to displace the remaining distilled water. This will eliminate any unwanted dilution of the standard being analyzed. Measure your meniscus carefully to make sure that the volume of sample you are analyzing is appropriate and consistent for each individual analysis. Make sure you are consistent with how you analyze each sample. Independent reference sample kits are an option that is available for routine calibration checks. These kits contain a bottle of a pre-measured volume of chlorine demand-free water and an ampule of NIST traceable free chlorine solution. When mixed according to the manufacturer's instructions, each kit will produce a set volume of free chlorine solution at a concentration certified by the manufacturer. While they can be used for routine quarterly checks, they are not suitable for initial calibration verifications, as each kit only produces one concentration. Okay, in this video, I'm going to show you how to use an independent reference sample kit to create a diluted primary standard for chlorine analysis that can be used for your quarterly verification of a grab sample method according to the requirements of method 334.0. So here's our easy mix primary standard chlorine kit. Once it's prepared, you have a 1.50 milligrams per liter chlorine. And you're also going to want to check the kit to make sure it's not expired. So let's take a look at what is included in our kit. So inside you'll have 97 milliliters of zero chlorine demand water. And you have your primary chlorine standard. It's a glass ampule that's inside a protective plastic sleeve. So be careful with it. You'll notice the glass ampule has two ends that you're going to break open and you also have inside the box the ampule breaker that will assist in that and then you have your instruction sheet so we're going to go down through the instructions you want to be sure that you have everything ready to mix and analyze your sample quickly as chlorine degrades so you want to make sure you have everything ready to go uh, prior to cracking the chlorine ampule so first you're going to open your 97 milliliters of zero chlorine demand water. Then you're going to hold your chlorine standard tube vertically and you're going to go ahead and break open that top tip. And you're going to invert it into the water. Okay. Now you're going to go ahead once it's over top of the 
sample, you're gonna go ahead and break that other top tip. And the chlorine standard, tap it against the top of the neck to get all of your standard into your water. Just make sure all that's in there. You're gonna go ahead and securely cap it and mix. You wanna to invert to mix, you don't wanna shake it. So the concentration of your diluted solution is 1.50 milligrams per liter. Now your sample is mixed and you're ready to go ahead and analyze for your free chlorine. Okay, now that we've prepared our diluted primary standard to the 1.50 milligrams per liter, we're gonna go ahead and analyze it. So let's take a look at things you're gonna need for that. So you're gonna need your handheld or bench top unit that you're gonna be utilizing to take your free chlorine analysis. You're also gonna need some Kim wipes, the free chlorine DPD powder pillow for the proper sample size, which is 10 milliliters. And you're gonna to wanna to make sure that it's not expired. You'll also wanna have your sample cell. And the sample cell should be clean and free of any scratches. And your, I use a dedicated sample cell. You don't wanna use a sample cell that you use for other um, parameters. So you wanna make sure that you have a dedicated free chlorine sample cell. And I've marked mine with an F so that I don't get it mixed up with the other ones. We're gonna go ahead and make sure that our sample cell is clean and rinsed from the previous sample. So I'm gonna rinse that with some deionized water. You could use distilled water. So we're gonna rinse that twice. And then I'm gonna do a final rinse with our prepared standard. I do that so that I don't dilute with any of the previous water that I used. Um, so that's the way I'm actually using the mixed standard. So we won't have any dilution factor with our sample. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that your meter is on the proper program for free analysis and you wanna perform that analysis and according with the manufacturer's instructions. So I'm gonna go ahead and measure out my 10 milliliter sample. I'm gonna make sure that you get that good meniscus. The bottom of the meniscus should be at the top of that 10 milliliter line. And you wanna get eye level with it to do a proper reading. You want to make sure to take any fingerprints off of your sample cell. And you want to make sure to align your sample cell in your meter uh, as required by your specific manufacturer of your meter. My particular meter has a, the sample cell has a diamond on it and I want that facing me. So I'm going to go ahead and zero the sample cell. And now I'm gonna add my packet of DPD powder for free chlorine. I'm gonna make sure to get all the powder into the sample. Then you're gonna follow the manufacturer's instructions according to your meter. My particular meter um, swirls for 20 seconds and you're gonna be sure to read this within a minute. Make sure all the powder has been dissolved. I'm gonna wipe any other fingerprints that you may have gotten on your sample cell. Place your sample cell into the meter. The correct alignment, you wanna be consistent with that. And then you're gonna hit read. And I got 1.33 milligrams per liter of free chlorine. Now, if you remember the sample that we mixed up, again, was a 1.50 milligrams per liter. So according to method 334.0,
you can have that plus or minus 15%. So your range for your samples could be between 1.28 milligrams per liter to 1.73 milligrams per liter. And now I'm going to take my result, the 1.33, and I'm going to record that on my quarterly verification sheet. If the standard meets the acceptance criteria of plus or minus 15%, the instrument has passed the routine quarterly calibration verification and can continue to be used for analysis of compliance samples. You need to maintain a copy of your routine calibration form. The only way to document that it was completed is to be able to produce a copy of this completed form. You may want to maintain a binder to contain all of your important Method 334.0 documents. Let's review the key points from this video. The routine calibration verification is a required component of Method 334.0. It evaluates the accuracy of the manufacturer programmed calibration curve of each instrument on an ongoing basis. The routine verification uses one primary standard concentration per quarter. For documentation, you can use the DEP record keeping form for routine verifications. This form, as well as the other Method 334.0 forms, can be found on DEP's eLibrary. In the next video in this series, we will review secondary standard verifications for the GRAB method, recommended by Method 334.0.